Hi, Anionson. Uh, thank you for sending along your uh, animation here. It looks really good so far. So, um, I assume that this is uh, Maricela's character and she's sort of singing, I think, right? And, and sort of moving her hands as she sings. Uh, that looks pretty good. There's a few um, pieces of, of advice I can give to make the movement look a little bit more organic. Uh, there's a lot good going on here. Um, really good construction. I really like the construction you have here of the torso and it does a really nice turn with the shoulders. That looks really good. Basically all of the construction and perspective looks pretty good. Um, so I'll just focus on uh, some animation stuff. Um, so this is something that a lot of animators when you first start out will do this same thing uh, that ends up kind of giving a robotic movement to um, especially if you're doing sort of a humanoid animation it will get this robotic looking movement because uh, each of the individual pieces of the body that are moving are all kind of uh, changing directions at the exact same time. And we don't want that. So the main things that we have moving in this animation is one hand, the other hand, and the head, right? Uh, and we're going from pose to pose. So you've created pose A here. I think you've got, you kind of went from pose A to pose B right here, right? You kind of have, oh, yeah, there we go. That's C, right? And then, yeah, right here would be pose D. So uh, you started out in the right way, right? You've got these different poses and then you wanna go between them. Uh, the sort of, the, the thing that sort of um, people get messed up with then is uh, we're going from pose A to pose B and then you just do the in-betweens between pose A and pose B. Uh, the problem with that is at this point, all of our three sort of moving parts, uh, hand one, hand two, and the head, have all moved and kind of hit their extreme point. They've hit sort of the farthest that they're moving at the exact same frame, and now they're moving back in the other direction, all at the exact same frame and on the exact same time. Uh, we don't want that because it's going to look um, really unnatural and kind of, as I said, like a robotic movement. Usually what you want to do, here I'll get rid of all the silliness I drew here. Uh, usually what you want to do is you want, say we've got this hand here and it's moving from here up to here. We want that hand to move and get to this point, but we want the other hand to either uh, follow so that it's kind of getting to this point either before or after this hand so that they're not getting to that second position at exactly the same time. So you kind of want to choose one hand that's going to uh, lead the movement and one hand that's going to follow the movement. So you can keep these exact same poses, but uh, at this frame here, instead of having maybe this, this hand here uh, kind of hit that extreme point, maybe it's still kind of lagging behind a little bit. Maybe it's sort of more kind of where it is right here. And then in the next uh, sort of, in the next frame, in the next drawing, we can start to have this hand moving back down, whereas this hand here is just reaching that kind of extreme point, like that. Sorry if you can hear the sound of my computer, my fan is broken. And that just means that they're still, they're still hitting the same position, position B, 
Uh, the hands are still moving in the exact same way, but one of them is uh, kind of ahead a little bit of the other hand. Uh, generally, we kind of want to do the same thing with the head as well. We don't want the head to be moving uh, and changing directions at the exact same frame as the hands. But uh, the most important thing is that the hands don't, uh, don't um, change directions on the exact same frame. Because with hands, it becomes very obvious uh, when that's happening. There's actually a term in animation, it's called twinning, because the two hands are like twins. They're moving at the exact same time. Um, so another example of that, we've got this sort of moment where uh, the hands come down into this third pose, pose C, we can call it. It might be nice if kind of right before, uh, right before this pose, this C pose, what if you had this hand kind of already coming to rest on the thigh like that? And it can kind of stay on the thigh just so that when this hand here kind of comes down and relaxes and finds its place on the thigh, this hand has already sort of reached it just so that they're not kind of coming down at exactly the same moment. Yeah. I'm gonna put a little thumb in there. <laughs> Uh, the other thing that I would say, so so to do that, just go in and kind of choose which hand you think should be uh, a frame or I guess four frames in this case, uh, four frames ahead of the other one, and just make sure that they're that they're kind of um, yeah reaching that that position that sort of uh, you have your position A B C and D. You want your hand to reach the position and then maybe the other hand sort of reaches it a frame later or a frame before. Uh, the other thing that I think would help make this a little bit more naturalistic, I really like the perspective that you have here. I'm just going to hide all that on the head here when it's sort of tilted up. That's really good. Whoops. There we go kind of that tilt to the head is really nice. But what's happening is something kind of similar. Uh, your movements are sort of following each other a little bit too closely. So we start out with the head kind of straight forward like this and our arms down. We move and then the head kind of goes upwards and at kind of at a tilt and the hands go up. And then the, ha the head moves back to that same position, hands move down again. And then the head moves up to this position and the hands move up again. And it's kind of a little bit samey samey. Uh, we've got the head kind of moving up and down and the hands moving up and down with the exact same timing. And it looks a little bit awkward. Uh, what I would suggest, you can play around with different things, obviously, but what I think would, would look really nice is if we do this head tilt only once throughout the entire thing. Maybe um, throughout the course of kind of the arms going up, down, up, down, maybe the head only goes up and down once throughout that entire time. So you could start out with your head kind of here, maybe at about the halfway point, you have your head like this, but it's not going, you know, you can get rid of the head here and have it kind of be more sort of straightforward or it's starting to move a little bit, starting to move and then moves up. and then moves back down to there. 
I mean, that's not the halfway point. That's quite a bit further than halfway. But however, however you do it, I think it would be good to have the, the head just move up and down once and the arms move up and down a, a couple times. That way the head and the arms aren't perfectly following each other uh, in a way that feels kind of um, like uncomfortable for a human, right? It's a, we want a little bit of asymmetry between the movements of the body. Other than that, I think, I mean, it's, it looks really good. The, um, the easing is pretty good. Uh, it's hard to do easing on fours like this, but you did a, a, quite a good job. The one thing I also will say, excuse me, uh, that is a little bit less important, but that I think could help make things look nice as well. Uh, so the most important thing I think is kind of um, changing the up the timing a little bit on the hands and the head so that they're not all moving uh, and reaching a, posi a, a position at the exact same frame. Uh, but another thing that you can do that I think might look nice with this arm movement here, it's really well done. The foreshortening is great. Uh, you've got sort of a movement with this hand here that's pretty straight up and down. Kind of the wrist sort of follows, follows that line like that, which is, is fine. It looks uh, very similar to a lot more similar to how we move in reality, uh, but in animation, we might want to take kind of more realistic movements and exaggerate them a little bit so that they look a little more fluid, uh, especially since she's singing and it's, you know, it's to music. We want it to look a little bit more, I don't know, a little bit more smooth. It can be nice to have that wrist move at a very gentle curve instead. Kind of like, like that. Uh, here we go. So, you know, we would start with the wrist kind of there, how you have it. It's starting to move at a bit of a curve. Maybe that curve's a little bit awkward. And then, yeah, maybe have the wrist a little bit further out and keep this same foreshortening, that looks good. Right, have the wrist kind of a little bit further. Or it could be inwards more, you could do whichever kind of curve you like, but just to have it at a little bit more of a curve rather than a straight line, just so that it looks a little more, you know, um, fluid and pretty. Right, so that you have kind of this sort of movement rather than sort of a straight up and down movement. And I mean, you can choose whatever part of the body. I like to use the wrist as kind of the guide point um, for w when I'm moving the hands around. I like to use the wrist as like the point of contact to make sure that everything's following a nice curve. But it looks fine the way that it is. That's not something that you'd necessarily really, really need to change. Yeah. Other than that, it, lo it looks so good. Uh, really smart keeping the legs pretty much, oops. The legs are pretty much still through the whole thing and you can use like a nice hold and just move the torso and the head and the arms and that's gonna save a lot of um, time and work and it'll still look nice. Yeah. Cool, it looks good.